Guys, what is up? It is Greg here, and we are entering a contest for Mr. Poetry on Plastic, who has uh, achieved the remarkable 10,000 subscribers. Congratulations to him. He is one of my top 10 favorite channels because uh, he has such a breadth of knowledge about all styles of music. He's a classical musician. He knows a lot about audio gear, and he likes all kinds of uh, genres of music. So um, I'm trying something new today. I'm inventing a new genre called making videos in bed. It's not at all to highlight my sexiness. It is to highlight my laziness. If I can create a YouTube channel without getting out of bed, I think I'm really on to something, don't you think? Let's look at six questions from Mr. Poetry on Plastic. And of course, I've got a pile of discs here in the wrong order. Start with something classical. Well, I have more classical than most people in the vinyl community. I probably have 10% of my collection, maybe three or 400 classical records. I just grabbed a couple things from the pile here in the bedroom. I forgot to plan on how close I would have to get. Bella Bartok, uh, music for something, something, and Celeste. This is all in German, so I don't, I can barely read it. Even though Bartok is Hungarian, this is a German record, and it's on this Heliodor, which I think is an imprint of Deutsche Grammophon. It's a pretty rare imprint, but this is the type of stuff I get to Goodwill for a buck or two. Unusual, but interesting, rare record. And also in the pile, literally I can grab records right next to it. There are piles everywhere. Here's another one I think I got at a, at a library sale for a dollar, I think. Sir Thomas Beecham with the beard conducting uh, Sibelius, the Finnish composer from Finland, and uh, Sibelius Symphony Number no. 7, plus some other pieces I'm really not familiar with. But this is an old record. Let's see the gold foil stamp. This is on uh, Angel EMI, probably from the 50s, or mid 50s, I'd say, because it does say play on a stereo cartridge. So, uh, Mr. Poetry on Plastic, can you explain this? Sir Thomas Beecham, BART. What does BART stand for? He's not a bartender. I have no idea what it stands for. But Mr. Poetry on Plastic knows for sure. Okay. Oh, I gotta restart the iPad to get my list, so bear with me. Uh, heavy. Show something heavy. And here's the band that always achieves total heaviosity. That is Sun. It's not pronounced Sun O, it's just Sun. The parentheses are silent, of course. This is a record called Canon, and they're always wearing the Gothic uh, wardrobe, you know, the, the heavy robes, and heavy drone, metal, Gothic. They're heavy. Here's another one of their records. What's it called? Oracle. I this for only 12 bucks, that's amazing. And it's some kind of open coffin. I don't know what it's all about. But their music is heavy, bizarre, pseudo, pseudo something, I don't know. Okay, that's, that's Sun O, Sun, not O, you don't pronounce the O, it's just Sun, okay? You guys know that. Show an artist or a group that you got into. This question is of circular logic. Show, uh, show a group that you got into collecting because you collect records. That's, I don't think that's what it really means. It really means, I think it means show a group or a record that you got into because you're here with people on the vinyl community. So, Dave Holland. This is called Unchartered Territories. This is a triple three disc set. It's massive. Dave Holland. Evan Parker on sax, Craig Taborn on all sorts of keyboards, Ches Smith on percussion. Dave Holland is a great bass player. I've seen him before, but he's, you know, he played on Miles Bitches Brew. He's doing all kinds of traditional stuff, but he's also getting into the free jazz. There he is, uh, showing off the uh, British dentistry that's so popular back there. Check out this cover, isn't it? Some sort of mandala effect. Uh, I think I heard about this record watching the channel of Mr. Uh, Fred University Putterman Winchester. 
and I really got into the whole free jazz thing really because of his channel. So uh, thank you, Fred. My family's really excited to hear the screeching of Albert Ayler uh, five times a week. Um, this record is not as screechy. This is very improvised, like they just made it up on the spot for the most part. Three disc set. I don't even know this label. Dare Two Records, Red Eye Worldwide. I never heard of that, but Dave Holland, amazing, amazing uh, bass player, but also amazing composer and improviser. And um, thank you to Fred Putterman for turning me on. I literally heard this record while he was live streaming it one, one evening. And is he still doing that? I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know, Fred, thank you. Okay, uh-oh. Uh, what about a foreign or non-English record? Bonus points are available. Okay. I just picked this up the other day. It's on CD. It is Boredoms. Boredoms is the craziest, loudest, noisiest Japanese avant-garde noise band. Boredoms. And oddly, oh, this is called Pop Tatari. And um, oddly, it's, re it's released on the Reprise label in the United States, which I was hoping it would be some obscure Japanese label. I haven't even looked at this inner weirdness. Um, Yamantaka Ai is the most well-known member of this band. He's, uh, he's the guy who screams a lot with John Zorn. If you've heard John Zorn, Naked City, kind of in the style of Yoko Ono, but even more uh, intense. Really a trippy, weird band. And it's on CD. Hey, this should have been my one for the next one that, you know, vinyl. Was this ever on vinyl? I don't know. Uh, Pop Tatari. I can't make out any of what that is, but I have another Japanese inflected record also. Um, walked into a cool store here in the San Fernando Valley called Deadly Wax. Saw this on the wall. I said, what is that? It looks bizarre. It's three Japanese dudes. Or is it two Japanese dudes? A couple of Japanese dudes. Japanese noisy avant-garde free jazz guys, including Yoriyuki Harada on piano and Kazutoki Umezu on sax, along with people like William Parker on bass, who we know pretty well if you're into the American free jazz scene. So these dudes came to uh, New York and did uh, a kind of East meets West thing, three Japanese, two or three Japanese guys and three or four American free jazz artists. Noisy, free, improvised. This whole bed thing is not working out as good as I thought it would be, because can you hear me when I go behind the record? The title, Sakatsu Kojo Inakai, in, I don't know, I can't pronounce it. It means something in Japanese that's supposed to be funny. I can't remember what it is, but uh, cool. I bet I'm the only person in the vinyl community showing this record, okay? Can I get extra points for that? Please? Uh, show a CD or a digital record or a tape that needs to be pressed on vinyl. I can't find the record that I want to show you, so I'll edit it in unless I'm too lazy. That is called Pop Pop by Ricky Lee Jones. And this was her least successful, least commercially successful record at the time. I think it was 91, maybe it was 96. It's uh, it's her doing jazz standards with a very sparse um, instrumentation. Uh, Robin Ford playing uh, nylon string guitar and I forget who else. Uh, no drum set, no electronics, no keyboards, just very, her voice and a couple of backing instruments, but a very vulnerable, intimate, emotional, uh, jazz standards. She does Dat Dare, which is by Bobby Timmons. Bobby Timmons wrote Monin for uh, Art Blakey, but his other sort of hit song was called Dat Dare, which does have vocals. And there's a Hendrix tune on there that's kind of cool, also Up From The Skies. Uh, 
This record was pressed on vinyl, but it's so rare. It's always going for like between 150 and 500 bucks. There's always two or three copies on eBay for two or 300 bucks. But why don't they repress it in like a normal volume so I can get my hands on it? But uh, Pop Pop from Ricky Lee Jones, and it has nothing with pop music. Figure that one out. Okay, is there more? Letter to the Editor. Okay, yeah, this one is great. Letter to the Editor. This is where I get to editorialize on the uh, on the, the oeuvre of Mr. Poacher on plastic. And instead of picking out a uh, piece of music or musical gear, I'm going to editorialize and laps, lap, lavish some praise on a video he did a couple years ago called uh, The Guide to Collecting Classical Music on Vinyl. And that's over an hour long. And to me, that is a classic video. Uh, it was actually in my top 10. I was going to do a list of top 10 VC vinyl community videos, and it was going to be that one and Michael Fremer's 100 Top Analog Records, and I couldn't come up with the other eight, so I never made the video. So here's my chance to editorialize on that video from Mr. Poetry and Plastic. Um, he gets very deep into the, the labels and the conductors in classical music, so it's not really... A beginner's guide, if you don't know anything about classical music, it assumes that you know a little bit about the repertoire, and that's a word that we use to mean, um, you know, do you know composers and pieces of music? Do you know Beethoven's seventh and ninth and all that stuff? If you don't know anything about classical music, this video might be too advanced for you. But to, to learn about, especially the vintage labels, you know, Decca and RCA and and the the tulips on the Deutsche Grammophone. Did I miss one of these things? Hold on, I'm just double checking. What I missed was number one, classical. I meant to show this classical record. This is one of the best classical records that's come out in the last couple of years. So making a pitch for it. Viking Gur Olafsson, Icelandic piano player, is in his mid thirties. He is taking the classical music world by storm. He's won all kinds of awards. This record has won a zillion uh, awards, best classical record of the year, blah, blah, blah. The title is simply Johann Sebastian Bach, and he's doing a variety of uh, Bach pieces. But the one that's been very popular is uh, Organ Sonata E Minor, track number five, uh, transcription of organ music, for piano. He has a feel that's just, it's hard to explain. Check it out. Okay. You like how I segued into that in the middle of praising Mr. Uh, Poetry on Plastic, plastic for his uh, classical guide to uh, yada yada. Um, so, Mr. Poetry on Plastic, if you're ever out in Los Angeles, did you move to Los Angeles? I don't actually know. But I've hung out with some people here that you've hung out with in our little, uh, Los Angeles-based VC group. If you're in Los Angeles, can we get together and talk about classical music sometime? I'd love to do that. Um, and congratulations for getting 10,000 subscribers. I hope I win that big pile of records that you're giving away. And uh, thanks for making the contest short and sweet so I can get through it. So thanks, guys. Coming to you from the bedroom cam, the boudoir cam at the Vinyl Rundown. Uh, it's only... It's not on after uh, bedtime, so don't get don't get your hopes up. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.